hello. Uh, thank you for um, having me on this conference. Um, as Alfred already mentioned, um, I am a great supporter of J6 Graph and also um, in Slovenia, we had uh, a project. I will show you um, uh, the results at the end as a tip how to uh, reuse the applets. Um, and I must say that uh, when you first see the J6 graph um, and how to make uh, geometric constructions, uh, it's a bit frightening. Uh, but uh, I must assure you that um, in Slovenia we have quite some teachers that uh, um, uh, overcame this um, fear and started to uh, program. I would say uh, because as you would see today, um, for the starters there is no programming, just uh, putting constructions together. Uh, as for the workshop, uh, this is intended for the beginners. Um, so if you already know how to program G6 graph applets, maybe you will uh, hear something new, but otherwise uh, this is for the uh, pure beginners. Uh, I will, uh, in this workshop, I will go very slow. So you can follow with your, uh, Mm, on your own computer, you don't just need to watch uh, and you can um, uh, do the same things that I do. Um, so let me share the screen uh, here. Okay. I, ho I hope that you see it. So um, first, let me talk about uh, a bit about Jay's graph book um, in the items project that Alfred already mentioned. Um, we have the uh, we, are, we are developing um, and preparing the book uh, with uh, basics uh, and also for advanced users. It will be multilingual, uh, multilingual. Lingual. So in this moment, we have English, Czech, and Deutsch, German. Uh, Slovenian language is not yet supported. It's in the menu, but it's not yet translated. And we will also have uh, Spanish uh, language uh, supported. So uh, where, the, where is the, uh, this book? So uh, how do you find it? Just write uh, Jessix Graph book, and you will find it uh, in the uh, results. Um, so it's quite easy when, when it's finished, it will be also published on the uh, items project page and probably also on the Jesse's graph page. Um, so um, this is for the, um, for the book. Uh, I will use the book for some uh, uh, insights or uh, some uh, how to uh, use the book and the docs, I will do it in the mixed way. So <clears throat> let's start. So what do we need actually for uh, basic JSX graph um, applets? In the talks later, I think uh, we will see also um, one talk about uh, how to make um, JSX graph applets in the um, on the web online, but here we will do it locally. Uh, so we need uh, a simple editor, text editor. If you're using uh, Windows, you can Notepad++. Plus plus. Uh, if you don't have installed anything, then it's Notepad. This basic Notepad that is, comes with Windows is also okay. Uh, here I use um, Microsoft Visual Code, which is also free. Uh, there is brackets, Atom. Actually, um, any uh, text editor is uh, okay for programming with um, J6 Graph. Uh, basically, we are uh, using HTML, so we need uh, some uh, basic 
uh, code that will that is necessary that will uh, operate uh, correctly so this is uh, we prepared a template um, uh, which is found here um, on the how to set up so um, this is the template we just copy everything to the new file so or you can click on this copy it I will open a new file. So I used shortcuts, new file, new file, and I will copy everything inside uh, this new file. Next, I need to save it in some on some known location. You don't need to have web server uh, locally. So don't be afraid. I will say example. And where will I put it? In documents, I will just put it here. Example.html. Um, and save. My editor, when I save the, um, oops, sorry about that. Um, uh, my uh, editor also colors the HTML code, but for us, uh, it's not necessary. So when I saved it, I can go to the Explorer or Finder in Apple on Macs. Uh, wait, Finder. Why? Because I need to open it. So here is the example HTML. I will just double click on the example and it will open the default browser in your computer and it will show the uh, drawing board of uh, our JSX graph construction. And this is, this is the beginning and now we just put elements on objects on the drawing board, uh, make their, their connection. It sounds uh, very easy, but you will see that when you have the construction prepared, uh, it's quite easy to uh, later implement it. So let's go back to the code. I will do it like this. I will have on the light, left side, I will have the code and on the right side, I will just uh, refresh uh, always what I just changed. Um, uh, show me my code closer. So I will see everything. I hope that you see. Um, the the code now first let us observe the this code uh, this is the all html and you don't have to worry about it it loads uh, jessix graph it styles and also it loads magix uh, now uh, I, uh, you will see that uh, from first talk that this was already mentioned we, we need uh, one um, box div uh, which is um, actually our drawing board or or how we could say that this is used by html to um, reserve the space for our construction uh, what can we see here is that we have width and height and also in pixels so 500 pixels width and height is 200 pixels um, we can change this if you need a square board, you can save it and here reload it and you will see the instant the change. Okay, now we go further. Let's say we will keep the, the, uh, the square uh, drawing board. Uh, now we have here script and first line board is uh, some constant or JSX graph, and we will initialize board. We will call it the same as here. So we connect the HTML with JSX, box, uh, JSX graph. And here we have the bounding box. Bounding box is, uh, you can um, look at it as coordinate system in the, um, uh, in the JSX graph. And uh, you must know that if I have here two and I put point at, um, I don't know, three, it won't be visible. 
So I have, if I want to see the objects, they have to be inside this, this uh, bounding box. You can place them outside, but they will, won't be visible. They, can, they still can be there, but they won't, won't be visible. So uh, since we are, uh, we changed the, uh, to the square, I will also change it here to have um, the same uh, bounding box as square, because otherwise it will be uh, the the construction will be distorted, a bit distorted, and we don't want that. So we have the board. I will again reload it, and nothing happens because we didn't change the uh, HTML, only the gra in it initialized board. So how do we proceed? Let's go back to the JSE graph book and uh, I will show you, let's create one point. So how do we create it? We just say board create what point and where. So I will go here. I will say board create, I will go, okay, what? I will show you later what objects can we uh, create. And we have to provide two points, X and uh, Y coordinate. Um, and uh, we will provide them as a um, list. So we need square brackets. So uh, let's say the first point will be minus two and minus one. So I need to finish this with semicolon. I will save it. So save, file, save, and I will go back to my J6 graph and I have the point. Okay, so uh, today I planned to, um, to make uh, a triangle. Uh, with some famous points inside. So the, um, we will uh, create ortho center, centroid, uh, and circumcenter, uh, which all lie on the Euler line. Euler line and we, if we have time, we will make some uh, other changes uh, like uh, in center for in circle. Um, okay. So uh, it's always good. Um, when you create the, um, the construction that you remember um, points. So when I create this point, I still can move it. You see, I can move it, but I cannot reference it, it uh, in, the, in my construction. So I, I usually um, name all the, uh, the co uh, all the objects, uh, on, in various ways, uh, most uh, basic is to provide a, a variable. So I will say var variable var a equals board create. So now I can reference, as you can say, uh, move a to someone somewhere else, and the J6 graph will know what to do to do with it. Okay, so it's always uh, good to have. Uh, all um, objects stored in some way. Uh, I will show you uh, at, the, at the end how to uh, put variables in the list and just uh, because when you have a lot of variables, it's not it doesn't make sense to name each one separately. Okay, so we said we will need uh, a triangle. So we will have another point. So board create again point with coordinates. Uh, let's say coordinates two and 1.5. You can have, you, you also can have decimal uh, numbers. It's not, uh, you don't need to have uh, integers. And the third one, C, equals you can also copy it if you if you want and just change the um, 
the name and the coordinates. Uh, I will have three and minus four. I will save it and here reload it. Okay, I have three points um, already with correct names. You can change that. I will show you how to change this naming if you, if you, don't, you don't want uh, such uh, names for the vertices or points. Okay, so now we need a line or better, we need a segment. So let's go and find how do we create a segment. If you go to the book, you will see that we have only creating lines here and we will create lines, not segment. So hmm, how do I get the, to the, to the, um, uh, to draw a segment? We have two options. You can use a um, line with uh, endings, but we can also can have and go to look for the uh, documentation of JSX graph and help uh, us with that. So I will go to the JSX graph website. I will go to the docs and I will use app API reference. And here are the elements you will see I have here point. Okay, point is here, I can click on it. And I will see the basic uh, constructor how to create it. Var p1 is board.create point and the coordinates. Okay, now we go and search for the even, okay, I have to go. Here I have the segment, so I can construct the segment straight away with word create. Let's go and see what is the constructor. So how do I construct the segment? I need point and point, or I can provide also the array. Okay, here I think it's an example. So I need board create segment and two points. So let's go and do that. Again, I will store it. Segment one is board create. Create what I will create the segment. And I need to provide two points. I will provide Y, A, and B save and I will go back to my drawing board. Sorry about that. I'll close it. No. So I go back to the drawing board and I'll refresh it and I have a segment line between A and B. Okay, now let's copy and do the other two segments to finish our triangle. I have to rename the second one with segment two. I can, if it's easier for you, I can name them segment A, B. Maybe it's more uh, descriptive. Uh, this will be A to C. And the last one will be B to C. So B to C. Save. I created three points and three segments. I will go now back, back to the uh, my uh, HTML, refresh, and I have the triangle. Okay, now we will do the ortho center. Okay, this will, I will, uh, if you want to write um, uh, comments, I will, uh, you can write it with two uh, slashes, triangle. Now we will go to the ortho center. 
like this. Okay, so ortho center is what? We have the altitude and we have to um, uh, draw a perpendicular uh, line which goes to B and is perpendicular to the opposite segment. So it's like if we have um, altitude to through B, we go perpendicular to A to and C, segment A to C and through B. So let's do that. I will go to the, uh, again, to the book. And we have here po, 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 intersection. We don't have the uh, perpendicular yet. I will search here for, oh, here is it, perpendicular. I'll click it. And so how do we construct it? We need a line and we need a point. So here is the example, perpendicular. We need a line first and then a point. Okay, let's go here. And we will write um, variable P, let's say to, it's, we talked about uh, B, so we will have perpendicular to B is board create. You, you will see, you will see that uh, for in the beginning when you uh, start construction, you will use uh, board create a lot. Uh, later, you will do uh, some optimizations and will not be so common or so um, um, regular. Okay. Perpendicular. And we already have the segment. We said that uh, in our example, when we have to go through uh, B, then the segment is AC. So again, I will have the list segment AC and point B. Finish. Let's see if we did it correct. Again, here save, go here and refresh. And we have the perpendicular through B. And if I move, you see it goes with the line. And this is the, the magic of dynamic geometry. So I have the, the one perpendicular, okay? But it's black and I don't like it. It's a solid thick line and it's not that important in my construction. So I'll go back to Jesse's graph book and I will see if there are some attributes. So if I, I can style the, the line, we'll see here. You see here we have the some attributes. We can make color, we can have size and so on. So if here we have the line and probably it will be the same or similar for our uh, for our perpendicular or our attitude through B. So what I, do I need? Uh -huh. You see, these are the curly bra braces, brackets. Um, so uh, here are the square brackets and here are the curly brackets. Uh, let's see, we, say, we, hear, we see here that we have dash. So we can have dashed line. Let's go here, uh, maybe I can find it. Here's the size, face, documentation for dash attribute. I will open a new link. So dash, we can have seven different uh, styles for the line. Dotted line, line with small dashes, medium dashes, big dashes, and uh, alternating. So we will say, okay, we will have dash colon and let's say one. And we have to say it for that it's in the um, 
parentheses. Okay, for this is uh, <clears throat> not, I think not always necessary, but it's always good practice to have it like that. Okay, save and go back and refresh. Now we have to be uh, careful. I changed earlier the, the, the position of B point with vertex B. Uh, and when I refresh, it goes back to the original here that we created. So it's always the default values when you will refresh. Okay, now we have a bit better. So we have the dotted line. We can, it's still very thick. So I know that it's uh, other attribute is size and we will say like again one. So size parenthesis is one and again save and reload. Now it's I think a bit better or three, let's see. No, it's not happening yet, not even happening, dash four. Yeah, Alfred? It's stroke width. Aha, uh -huh. stroke, uh, it's not for stroke, thank you. Width for the lines, right? Not size, size is for the font, uh, for the text. Stroke width. Uh, let's go back. I save it. It's in the documentation, but I didn't um, uh, look at it. So it's now it's better. So um, let's copy this and make uh, other two attitudes uh, attitudes for the uh, two other two vertices. So I will say perpendicular to A is segment through A is B, C, segment B, C, and point A. And the last one is through C, segment A, B. Oh, sorry, segment a, B, vertex C, and I can save it and refresh. And I have now the all three necessary, I actually need only two, but let's say it's, it's much nicer to have all three. Okay, um, but we observe that this, this one is repeating. What we can do is that we can uh, copy it and have another variable as style. So we will say uh, perpendicular perpen style, and we will copy it like like this here. Why is this good? Because I can now use this new variable instead of this in place of this um this list or so i can change it to here why is this uh, wise because when you have like three or more uh, when i change one in one place then the three lines will be affected i can add um, stroke color I think that it's the correct one. Uh, we will go to the reference and we will see down here that I think that it's stroke color. Um, yeah, where is it? Stroke color, here, stroke color. We can use this one. So I have the stroke color but which color I can use. I can, if you know the English words, you can have like uh, uh, green or you can have the hexadecimal values. I will now use the green 
and I will later, you see, now it's green. I will go inside, it's green. Uh, you can use also the HTML H codes like this. Um, and all these websites with colors, where are they? HTML color, color codes have always this hexadecimal value which represents the color and you can copy it like, I don't know, let's go green and I will copy this one, copy and put it instead of uh, word green, save and go back to the template and it's again green. So we have the, the um, three lines intersecting in one point. This is ortho center. So let's make a point of this from this one, this intersection. If we go back to the uh, our book, you will see that we have intersections. Um, how do we create intersections? We have the the element intersection where we just provide two objects. Uh, this number here is when you have two possible intersections and you have to say which one you, you will use. Uh, so we will use this. So we have intersection and two objects. Okay, let's go here. Uh, the ortho center is usually uh, named as H. So H is board create. Uh, intersection and again two objects. Which objects we will use? We will use these lines, perpendicular lines through A and B through that are going, okay? P A and P B. And this is for the starters, starters everything that we need. We go back to the template and we refresh it and we have the point here and the point will move when we change the position of vertices. But here we see that it's called D, but we want it H. So we again can have the attribute and this attribute is uh, called uh, name and it's probably the very used one. So we have name and we will call it H. Okay, so we created intersection. So uh, the, the, the beauty is that we don't have to calculate uh, where intersection is, but we just say that we want intersection. So this is the, the, the very big advantage of uh, JSX graph. So we can um, <clears throat> just use some uh, constructions or elements. Okay, so I save it and reload it and I'll have H. So first one is already here. The, the next one is centroid. So centroid is uh, gravity point of the triangle and it's the median. It's medians of the triangle. So we need the midpoint of the, of the segment and it's which is connected to the uh, opposite uh, vertex. Yeah. Okay. So ortho center is done. We go to the centroid. First, we need to have um, midpoints. We can calculate them, or we can go and see if there already exists some method for the uh, midpoint and yes, it exists. So we have the midpoint. Let's go and see what it uh, needs. It needs two points and we will calculate the midpoint. But we have already mid, uh, this point so we can quickly have the, also the midpoint. Uh, so var midpoint AB is board create, 
So you, you, you see that these reference uh, docs are very useful. Midpoint. And we have to provide two points. We have A and B. And this is for the starters all. Okay, now let's go back, refresh, and we have here the midpoint. Now we have also the name of the midpoint, but we don't want it. So we'll, we have the, I use district, maybe there's some more elegant way. I just say name is empty. And if I save this, then it's there is no uh, number or letter here for the vertices. Now we can repeat this two more times to have first midpoints, and then we have uh, we will connect that connect them with the opposite vertices. So A to C is midpoint A to C. And midpoint B to C is B to C. Save and reload. I have now the the midpoints of the the segments or the triangle sides. Okay. Now we have to connect them with opposite uh, vertices with, again, with segment. We know how to do this because we already did it here when we constructed the basic triangle. So um, we'll say war centroid uh, segment. These names, it's always uh, very good that you have the descriptive. Um, names but don't uh, be over enthusiastic with the names I, I already i'm over too much uh, so segment uh, center is segment a to b okay, we'll say just a is board create what segment where? Okay, so we have board segment. We will go midpoint A to B to C. So midpoint A to B, and the second point will be C. Save, and let's go see if we are doing correct. Yes, we have the uh, the this center. We could also uh, um, use line. If we change this to line, we can look at it. Uh, I will save it again. Control File Save. Go here. Reload. Now we have the line. It's matter of taste. I will leave it to segment so I don't have the, too much of the um, um, different lines floating around. I will, okay, I will now style this, um, uh, these lines, centroid style. Again, is I will just copy from here because I will have a different. Um, color and maybe different dash. I'll do it two and I will go to the HTML codes and make it, I don't know. Uh, like this pink one. Copy, go here and replace this one. Okay, don't forget semicolons. And I will use it, centro it style. Okay, go here, reload. And we have the line here. 
Now all I, I need to do is that I go and make other two uh, lines. So, so centroid segment B is AC and B. And the, the last one is segment C. C and A. So I have all three um, centroid segments. Now I can do the intersection. Call it G is board create the same as earlier with H. Create uh intersection intersection uh between what intersection again lines centroid segment a and centroid segment b we don't have to provide the last one okay i have one uh i will name it Name G. Safe. I have G here. So if I move it, I see I, it's moving also. Okay, the last one is circumcenter, which will be uh, done much easier because. The circumcenter is uh, what? It's perpendicular to midpoint of the segments or the edges of the or the sides of the triangle. So midpoints we already have. We not just need the mm. perpendiculars. So circumcenter. Okay. Bar um, circumcenter. Let's say A is board create what perpendicular to what through um, we have the segment, so we have the segment. A, B, and also the point on that segment. So we have A, segment A, B, and also this point that lies on midpoint. Midpoint A, B is on A, B. So midpoint A, B. Let's see if it's, we have it correct. Yes, it goes to here. Okay, uh, we will style it later, uh, or maybe just let's do it now. We have, uh, what color should we use? I will just copy this one and rename it a bit different and use different color. Um, so we have circa style, and we will use, let's see which color, uh, orange. There is orange, here is orange. I will copy it, go here, copy it here. Like this. So I lift everything uh, in the uh, same, just the stroke color is different. And I will use this circus style. Save it, we go back to the template and we have here the orange uh, perpendicular through midpoint. Now we can copy it and adapt it to other two midpoints. 
So circ B is a segment AC and midpoint AC and circ C is BC and midpoint BC. Save and reload. Here is the, you see, uh, when uh, it's nice feature from just this graph when you go and uh, select or you don't have to click it, you see which one are, uh, could be selected. So we have the, here the intersection and we can create a new one. Uh, I will just oh no, I will write it. Var variable Q is what is board create again intersection between what circ. Uh -huh. You have to have list in square brackets, circ A, circ B. I will just add a name. Name is Q. Okay, I will save it, save and reload. Now we have the three lines, uh, three points, sorry. We can now construct, we said that we'll start with uh, the, uh, the Euler line. So we will construct Euler line with board, create, and we will create a line for which one, which points, we can name two, uh, let's say H and G, H and G, and we can conclude or stop, file, save, and reload. And now we see that all three points lie on the, on the Euler line. There's more points on this line, but for today it's enough. Let's say we want, if we have the circumcenter, let's do it also the, the, the circle. How can we do it? Uh, um, our circle is board create. Let's go and to the reference. This is the last thing that I will do today. Uh, circle it's, you need two points. So the center and the radius, which can be uh, done in various uh, ways. So the radius can be number, point, line, or a, another circle. So we will create a circle and we need to provide two, uh, so the center of, this circle is Q and the radius is what? One of the points or vertices of the triangle. The, doesn't matter which one. I go back, reload, and I have the circumcircle. And also the points, as you can see, are all also here. So this is the the beginning how to start creating or constructing um, geometrical constructions. As you can see, you can use a J6 graph. I will um, go here. Um, Roman from, uh, Roman Hasek from uh, Czech Republic uh, made some very interesting examples. You can see here uh, more advanced ones, uh, which are also explained so you can see how to uh, construct even more complex uh, lines with gliders and so on. Uh, we have 
some examples which can be very interesting to study and uh, to see how were they made. This is not uh, all. We can go here. Now we know how to use the JSX graph reference. Oh, wait, I will, go. I will just go back to the original site. Here we have also first docs. We have examples. You have to here are uh, plenty of different examples. I will don't, I won't show you uh, all of them. Maybe I don't know. It's not. You can try and uh, rectangles. Let's see. It's very. Now what we see here is that we don't see the code. How were they constructed? So uh, you have here view, view source, and you can see it like this. Um, or you can go back to the page and you can right click and see view page source and you will see the same code here. And this is the, the thing that I wanted to show you because uh, you can use or reuse, of course, that uh, with the author's uh, approval that you can use this uh, JSX graph uh, with your own projects. You don't have to uh, <clears throat> program everything from the start. You just can uh, modify uh, some existing applets. Now I will show you the, the work that we did in, the, in Slovenia. This is eudeniki.si. If you're interested, this is the, the 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 address. It's all in Slovene, but I wouldn't worry. You can go, let's say, to translate Google. You can input this address. You say that this is Slovene um, in your your own language, and then say you want English. Then click on it and the Google will translate it for you. And as you can see, we have mathematics, uh, English, also German, ch chemistry, uh, physics, and all these textbooks use J6 graph. And these textbooks were made like eight years ago or five years, the, the newest one. And if you go inside one, let's say Vega 2 is for a second year of gymnasium in Slovene. You can click on index and we have Euclidean geometry and geometry vectors. You can click um, and see the, the English is not always the, the correct one, a regular polygons. Uh, the math won't work, but we can move, wait. We can move forward. And you see here, this is the uh, loading, just a second. Okay, this one, is, something is not working correctly. Okay, something is, something is not. Uh, this is the, the J6 graph. You can go uh, and see page info, not this one, page source, sorry. Not, you don't look at this. This is the, oh, uh, this is made from um, uh, from Google Translate. Maybe you find the correct um, uh, applet that you want and go back here, copy it and use in Slovene. Is the same page. Now it should work. And now it's working. See? Um, and if you go uh, view page source, now it's much cleaner and you will find the, the code for JCX graph that constructs this uh, very quickly and you can modify it. This, all these textbooks are free and uh, common creative commons, so you can use it uh, for your own good. Um, just uh, one thing when you program, uh, 
like this. I will go back to my code. And let's say that I make a mistake. I will leave this one. So I'll, I forgot to add another point. I will save it and reload. And you see that something is missing. Now the question is how do I debug uh, this? Because I'm in browser, this is could be quite uh, hard, but in browser you can always go to the wait tools and the, 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 the web developer. This is Firefox web developer and Google tools or web console. You see this web console is important because here I have the error can create perpendicular with parent types line 72. I go oh, here is not 72 because this is from the G6 graph. Uh, here is anonymous documents example line 50. You see, I go to line 50 and see that I missing here a second point. So I have to add midpoint, save and refresh. So this web console is your friend in this when you start uh, making constructions. Um, yeah, I think I'm almost out of time. So uh, if uh, you have any questions, I will be around today, tomorrow and on Thursday. Thank you.